Hello everyone. Today we are going to be installing WebODM on Windows 10 and Windows 7. First, due to the fact that running WebODM requires a virtual machine to run on Windows, we will need to ensure that virtualization is turned on. To do that in Windows 10, go to your Task Manager and click the Performance tab. Here, you see it is enabled. In Windows 7, we have to download the Microsoft Hardware Assisted Virtualization Detection Tool. Just search for the tool on Microsoft's website and click Download. I recommend checking the user guide in addition to the .exe file. Click Next and when prompted, click Run. If you save it to a file such as Downloads, simply go to it and click on the HAV Detection Tool application. The tool will notify you as to whether or not virtualization is enabled. If it is not enabled, in this case, we will need to go into the BIOS system of the computer. The process for enabling virtualization varies by computer model. And a quick search on how to enable VTX for whatever model computer you are using is recommended. To enter BIOS, Restart your computer and begin tapping the F9 key as it begins booting. The key to use varies by computer model, so do a quick check online of how to enter BIOS on your computer. In our BIOS, we need to go to System Configuration, Device Configuration, and then check the virtualization technology box. Once that is done, we can click Save and Next. In Windows 10, the process is almost identical. Enable virtualization, save, and exit. Now that virtualization is enabled, we can move on with the rest of the process. We are going to install Git, Python, and Docker from git-scm.com forward slash download. Click Windows to immediately begin the download. As that is downloading, let's go to python.org forward slash downloads forward slash windows to download Python. We would need to use Python 3. Pick whichever installation method best suits you. Now, we're going to install Git. Pick the settings that best suit your needs. Note, from here on out, in the video, downloads and installs will either have been sped up or cut out, so expect these to take more time when you're actually doing them. Make sure to check the Add Python to Path box. The way we install Docker is different between Windows 10 Professional and other versions of Windows, including Windows 10 Home. Let's start the process with Windows 10 Professional. We will download Docker from this URL for Windows 10 Professional. Download.docker.com forward slash win forward slash stable forward slash docker percent sign 20 for percent sign 20 windows percent sign 20 installer.x, exe that is. While that downloads, let's go over how to install Docker for the other versions of Windows. We're going to download Docker Toolbox from github.com forward slash docker forward slash toolbox forward slash releases forward slash downloads forward slash v18.09.3 
forward slash docker toolbox dash 18.09.3.exe. Check the appropriate settings. And that's all. Now that Docker is done downloading for Windows 10 Pro, let's install it. Once the installation is done, click the desktop link. You will see a white whale in the icon bar in your lower right. Docker may take a while to finish starting up. Right click on the icon and go to settings. After Docker is done starting up, allocate half of the available CPUs and roughly 70 to 80% of the available memory. At least 100 gigabytes of disk image is recommended. Apply these changes and Docker will then restart. Now let's configure GitHub. Go to Git GUI and in source location type https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash open drone map that's capital O D and M forward slash web O D M capital O D and M here as well and choose a folder to place this in make sure recursively clone submodels 2 is checked Now go to the repository button and click create desktop icon from the menu. From the same menu, click git bash and type dot forward slash web ODM dot sh space start into the terminal. The setup process may take a while. Once done, go to a web browser and type localhost colon 8000 so I already had an instance of WebODM running so this is the page that I see you will see a page asking you to create login information congratulations you have set up WebODM in Windows